Hey gamers, we're back with another episode of Let's Create a Competitive Card Game. In this episode, I'll be coming up with a couple more card types, going over the resource system I have in mind for this game, as well as revealing one of the logos for this game. So let's get started. The last episode, we expanded on the world lore. Specifically, we came up with the guild structure. Now, guilds in this game act as colors in other games. So within this game, there are three different guilds and each guild has its own unique set of play styles. Also, something that we did last episode was kind of start the first draft of the rule books. We went ahead and listed the win conditions. We also came up with the game areas, which are just the standard game areas in the majority of the games out there. And we started on the card types. So for card types, we came up with two. The first being the class card type, which acts as, say, your faction within the spoils or your J ruler and force of will. So in this game, the class card represents you and your guild within this game world. And it kind of lists uh, these things right here. So your name, your guild, etc. And something about the class cards in this game is that they have a an effect called a will, which is just a one-time auto-activating effect, which may or may not have requirements. And the other card type we came up with is the follower card type. So followers just act as characters in other card games. And one thing I also came up with was this status. So this status is kind of like what the class or the type would be in other card games, i.e. a card status could be a warrior, a mage, a archer, etc. So that's just a quick overview of the things we did last episode. So to begin this episode, what I actually want to do is go over the resource system I have in mind. When I was coming up with the game concept, I mentioned that I wanted a strategic two mana system. And so to kind of explain this, I'll go over the mana systems again. So some games have a mana system where the mana is within the main deck. It gets shuffled up in the main deck and drawing the mana is up to random chance, barring any card effect that may allow you to retrieve the mana from your deck. Other games have the mana in a separate deck. However, if you're using, let's say, two colors or two different manas or multiple manas, you shuffle them up and it's still based on luck of the draw. And other card games have a mana system built into their character cards like Yu-Gi-Oh! where you have to sacrifice or tribute lower level cards in order to summon, special summon, etc. other cards. So, Yu-Gi-Oh's mana system is, or I shouldn't say mana system, Yu-Gi-Oh's resource system is built into the characters of the game. Now for this game, I've been doing some thinking and I did say I wanted strategic and I wanted two manas. So the idea I've come up with is there will be two types of mana in this game and instead of being within a, a within your main deck or within a side deck, etc. The way the mana system in this game will work is that at the start of your turn, you, the player, can pick one of the two manas to gain. And with that, the cards within the game will require either one or both of the manas to play. So now that's where the strategic part kind of comes in. So if you have a some cards in your hand that only require one of the manas, then on your turn, you would want to gain that one mana. Or would you rather set up for future turns if you have cards in your deck that require other mana? So what I'll actually do instead of writing it here in the game concept, I'll go over here into the rule book and I'll add a new section. So this section will, let's, let's add it here. And we can just call this section, let's see, I'll call it, uh, let's say basics. I'll go ahead and align this left again. And 
So the name of this resource system, I'm just gonna call it an ability system. And within this ability system, there are two types of resources, or what I'm gonna call them are resource points. So there are skill points, and there are what I'm gonna call talent points. And what I'm gonna actually note here is that, let's say cards and effects can use uh, either. Or how about this? Cards, hmm, cards and effects. Cards and effects may require either. Or both. To play or use. And these points, these skill points and these talent points actually tie into the two new card types that I have in mind. So the first card type I have in mind is a skill card. Now a skill card, let's say skill cards represent any any abilities that, that the character has learned through let's say hard work. So think of skills in real life. You have to practice to perfect a skill. So I'll say that skills, let's say skills, uh, skills represent, let's say abilities learned. Yeah, abilities learned. And we can say through training and experience. And since skills are things that you can learn through training, experience, hard work, etc., these cards will be kind of like quick, quick play spells or instants or tactics. Um, for those of you who are familiar with those card types in those games. So that's to say that these cards can be used on any player's turn. And we can also say that these cards primarily require skill points to use. And instead of saying skill points, I would just abbreviate it with SP. And now we can also say that the obvious of when a skill resolves, its effect happens. And we can also say, let's see, it's if that happens, and then it's sent to the discard pile. And what I'll do in a different revision, or maybe in the future, is I'll add a definition for what it means to resolve. And let's go ahead and what I'll do is I'll paste this just so I don't have to keep typing the parts. And let's see, what are the parts of a skill card? So obviously it will have a name, it will have a cost, and the cost will be the skill points to play it. Uh, okay, so we don't need a guild and a status for a skill point. Let's start here. We don't need a status, we don't need a guild. We need a cost, eh, we need a type, skill cards don't need attack and defense, uh, yeah, they'll list any game mechanic they have in any text. So that's skill cards. And the next cards will actually be called 
you've guessed it, talent cards. And for this game, talents will represent natural talent. So things that you are just naturally gifted with. And so let's, yeah, let's, let's put that down. Talents represent So talents will represent natural talents in this world and as such since skill cards can be used on either player's turn we'll say that talent cards can only be used on your turn and that's basically because just because you're talented at something doesn't necessarily mean you're the best someone who has worked really hard to become good at something that you're naturally gifted with will probably be better than you if you don't also train to, let's say, increase that talent. Something like hard work beats talent. So we'll say that these cards can be used on your turn only. And we'll also say they primarily require TT to use. And we can, we can also say that, let's say like skills, we can say when a talent resolves, its effect happens and it's sent to the graveyard. And then it is sent to you. Or graveyard, sorry, discard now. Thinking about you, yeah. And we can also say that talent cards have the exact same parts as a skill card. Now, one thing that I don't want to happen is. Let's go up here. So the ability system is made up of skill points and talent points. And cards and effects may require either or both to use. So what I don't want to do is make a, make a system where these skill cards only require skill, skill points and talents only require talent points. So what I want to say is that both these cards will primarily require SP to use for these skill cards. But what I'll say is, let's say more powerful skills may also require some talent points to use. Yeah, more powerful skills. And we can also say the same thing for uh, for these talent points. More powerful talents may also require skill points to use. And the idea behind this is that you are, you the player are part of a guild. So let's say in your guild or in your guild, let's say there are people who are really skilled, but the highest skilled moves also require you to have some natural talent. So that's to say the same thing I just explained previously where hard work beats talent. So that's to say that if you are naturally talented with some ability and you work hard to sharpen that skill, you would be better or that skill would be a lot stronger. And the same thing goes for talents. If you're naturally talented at something and you work hard at it, you will also be the equivalent of someone who is skilled and talented. 
with a specific skill. And with that said, I can also, hmm, so I mentioned that the three different guilds would have different play styles, but I think what I also want to do is maybe set these guilds to, to have some unique point that they use. And yeah, so let's do that. Let's do that. Let's say there's three guilds. And I, I believe I mentioned previously that the the guilds would be the, the uh, primary colors. So let's say red, uh, red, blue, yellow. And so actually something I can also do is I'll kind of come up with an idea of the play styles that these colors have and also maybe list with their primarily uh, what abilities point. Oh, that's a good idea actually. So let's go to, let's go to the notes here and let's say ability point. And ability point will just be a reference to uh, how should I say this? An ability point is a skill point or a talent point. And I'll list these out. Okay, so that's good. So whenever something, let's say if a card requires an ability point to use, that means you can use a skill point or a talent point. And so let's start with red. So when I think of red, I think of fire. Um, so let's say that red is, let's say their play styles are, let's say strong uh, physical cards. And I said play style, but I'm thinking of card types in my head now. So an example of a red card would be, say, a warrior. And let's say they are about inherent destruction. So maybe some dragons or something. And let's say that warriors, or sorry, not warriors, let's say that red is a skill-heavy color. So the red gill will primarily rely on skill. So they primarily rely on training and hard work. And within this gill, the higher ups are also really talented, uh, really talented people. And for blue, uh, when I think of blue, I think of water so we can say let's see water hmm. maybe so water can okay how about this blue has a focus on on life as water can give life but when i say focus on life i don't mean necessarily life gaining i mean anything that deals with life uh, manipulation. So let's say gaining, uh, burning, so like burn debt, let's say recovering. We can say uh, stuff like damage prevention. So, so yeah, and we can, hmm, I'm not sure life gain or focus on life I'm not sure okay so I'll come back to the to what they're based on so now for yellow um, I actually I don't know what to think of what yellow but based on what's here we have kind of like your strong physical decks or your beatdown decks uh, your kind of like your 
burn debts, life gain debts, uh, damage prevention, and stuff like that. So the only other thing is control deck. So I'll just say focus this on control. And those are like the, the three main play types. And now things like, let's see what, so things like bouncing, um, or let's just say bounce. Things like bounce effects, uh, discard effects, uh, let's see, what else? De deck search, um, deck manipulation. etc and I'll put etc on all of these because this isn't to say that this is their only focus um, this is just what I can think of right now and when I think of control I think of let's say mages and sorcerers and wizards so I'll say that yellow will be talent heavy as you have as with sorcerers they have high natural talent and that actually gives me an idea so last episode I mentioned that with these card statuses and I, I listed them over here with these card statuses this doesn't necessarily mean that they are tied to a specific Guild. So, for example, there could be a a warrior in either the red, the blue, or the yellow guild, and their playstyle would be based on the guild they're in. So, for instance, if there was a mage in the yellow guild, they were focused on these types of things. So, like bouncing. Uh, discard etc and if they were in the blue guild they would focus on hoping you gain life and if they were in the red guild they would be like a battle man so they'd have like strong attack and defense with some uh let's say some stat some stat changing effects or something like that so that's how the different statuses or card types so that we all know what i'm referring to or not card types types that's how all the types can fit into any guild and you know what for blue I'll say that they are balanced water is balanced so that's to say they they use both have no main focus as water goes with the flow Okay, so I think this is good for now. Yeah, this this is good for now. And what I'll do is I'll actually bring up the the logo I have. All right, so I'm in Photoshop right now and this is the logo for the game. So I mentioned the name of the game was Mythical and I'm gonna call it Mythical the Card Game. And I know it's TCG, but this isn't considered a trading card game with respect to having to buy a lot of packs of cards, etc. Um, I mentioned I want a hybrid, which I will go over in a future episode. But yes, this is the logo for the game. And this is one of the logos. So I will also create a submark or what you call a icon logo, which is, will just be an icon that represents the brand of Mythical the Card Game. So think for Apple, they have the bitten Apple, or for Android, they have the little green Android. So I'll come up with something for this game. And another, not necessarily logo, but something else that I will need is actually the card back. So this, will not actually go on the back of the cards. This will go, uh, this would just be a logo. I'm not sure where to say this will go as I do think maybe the icon 
the icon logo will go on the card boxes. But yeah, so since we're on logos and talking about logos, let's talk about how you can get logos for a card game. So the way that I got this logo is I actually went to freelancer.com and put up something that said I needed a logo for the game. I told them the name of the game and told them kind of how I wanted it to look and then people did submissions for it. So there are a lot of ways to get art if you're not an artist. I'm not an artist. So I went to Fiverr, I tried that. I tried uh, DeviantArt, talking to some people there, uh, Freelancer. And one other way that you can do it is look at artists from, from some of your favorite games. So some cards list the artists which drew the art. However, those artists tend to be extremely expensive. And some cards are drawn by art studios which also tend to be extremely expensive for their services. So yeah, for this, I went to Freelancer, I set up a competition, and something that I noticed is the, the more money you're willing to pay, the essentially the more people you get submissions from and the better quality. So there we go, this is the logo. I'll put this on the channel and I'm gonna go back to the document now. Okay, we're back in the document. So for this episode, I'll say this is where I'm going to stop. What I'll do next episode is maybe come up with one or two more card types. I know I mentioned that I did want to have a lot of different card types. I wanted five mats and one being a catch-all which I'm still trying to figure out what that catch-all is. So yeah, so next episode, I'll come up with one or two more card types. So thanks guys, be sure to like, subscribe, and all of that other good stuff.